Okay, Cursor have just released Cursor 2.0, and along with that, they've also released their own coding model, Composer 1. In this video, I'm going to put Composer head to head with GPT 5 Codex. We'll set up identical environments, and I'll give them both the same prompts, and we'll see which one performs the best. Before we get started, a brief introduction to Composer. We can see here Composer is a frontier model that is four times faster than similarly intelligent models. The model is built for low latency agentic coding in cursor, completing most turns in under 30 seconds. Early testers found the ability to iterate quickly with the model delightful and trust the model for multi-step coding tasks. Composer was trained with a set of powerful tools including code base wide semantic search, making it much better at understanding and working in large code bases. For this test scenario we're going to start with empty directories. I'm going to give the exact same prompt and test to both models. We're going to ask both to write a PRD for a game and then turn that PRD into a game. It's the same test that I gave Codex versus GLM 4.6. I'll put a link to that video below if you want to watch that and see how that test went. But that's what we're going to do here for Composer versus Codex. It does say here that Composer is really good at understanding and working in large code bases. That will be an interesting future test I'll run, but for this one we'll be in blank empty directories. So we'll jump over to Cursor and set up our test environment and get started. Okay, so we're in Cursor. We've got both directories set up ready to go. We've got blank directories for each project. On the left hand side we've got Composer 1's test environment set up. On the right hand side we've got Codex. You can see here for Composer 1 We've got plan mode activated, so for the first test we're just going to ask it to plan and write a PRD. So we're in plan mode here. On the right hand side for Codex you can see we're using GPT-5 Codex High for this test and we are in chat plan mode. So we're in plan mode for both models and we're going to use the same prompt here to complete the first task which is to write a PRD. So I'll paste the prompt into the chat window for both models. We can see here the prompt is you are the game designer and product owner for a small browser game called Snake 2.0. Write a PRD describing how the game should work. And then we've got some more instructions on what should be outlined, the core gameplay loop, any new features, difficulty progression, visual and audio direction, a simple technical plan for implementing it as a browser game using HTML, CSS and JavaScript. Keep the PRD concise, creative and developer ready so that someone could start building the game immediately after reading it. Now keep in mind Composer is designed to be a really fast model and as we saw in the docs most responses take less than 30 seconds. On the other hand GPT-5 Codex typically takes longer to respond. That's going to be interesting to test on its own just to see how long each model takes and the differences in comparison given the speed of Composer 1 versus Codex. We'll hit enter on this prompt and let both models start working on the PRD. Okay, so both models have completed the task and they've written their PRDs for the Snake 2.0 game. Both models took a similar time to create the PRD, under 30 seconds for both. On the left hand side we have Composer 1's response, on the right hand side we have Codex's response. Let's quickly review Composer 1's PRD first. We can see it's broken it down into sections, overview and vision. We've got a vision statement, a target audience. A unique value proposition section, core gameplay loop is defined here. Snake movement mechanics is also outlined. Food collection and scoring, collision detection, game over conditions. Section 3 we've got features and upgrades. We've got a power up system. So we've got speed boost shield, score multiplier, shrink, slow motion and magnet as power ups in the game. We've got special food types, level progression, obstacle mechanics. We've then got a difficulty progression, so we've got a speed ramp up and definitions of how quickly the speed will increase. We've got progressive obstacle introduction, scoring multipliers, difficulty curve philosophy. We've then got visual and audio design, so we've outlined some UI UX design, audio design, responsive design. We've then got the technical implementation plan, so we've mapped out a project directory of what files will be required. To build the game, this is pretty detailed here that we've mapped out all the files that are required. We've then got core architecture, state management, canvas rendering, core classes, modules. It's a very in-depth detailed PRD here that Composer 1 has created. Performance considerations. We've then got success metrics and potential future enhancements that we can implement post-launch. A total of 381 lines in this file. 
If we now have a look on the right hand side at Codex's version, we've got a product overview, a primary objective, target platforms, success metrics. We've then got the core gameplay loop defined here, input and movement, objectives and scoring, failure condition, differentiating features. We've got difficulty progression similar to Composer. It's outlined a difficulty progression structure here. We've then got visual and audio direction and a technical implementation plan. So we've got architecture, game loop and state, content and progression, persistence and services, tooling and QA. We've then got roadmap and dependencies, pre-production, core build, polish and launch. A total of 102 lines for Codex's PRD version. So again, it's a lot more detailed, the Composer version on the left hand side. Similar in terms of the content. Composer's done a really good job here, I think, with the detail it is included. From my experience so far using Codex, a shorter PRD can still produce really good results. So the next test will be interesting, but if you're looking to just build out a PRD, this is a really good performance by Composer 1 here. I think if I was to compare that even to things like Claude and GLM, this stacks up pretty good, the Composer version for detail. So pretty good result here. PRD on the Codex version is pretty much in line with my past results I've seen with Codex creating PRDs. Every time Codex has created a PRD, the result of the actual build has been really good. So it might be shorter and less information, but still effective for building with Codex. That will be the true test and we'll move on to that next. We'll get both models to now build this game and we'll test them out. Okay, so we're back in our chat interface for both models here. We've switched over to agent mode, so now they will be able to proceed with the build once we give our next prompt, which is the second test, to actually build the game based on the PRD. So you can see the identical prompt we are giving each model in this case. Using your own PRD as reference, build the playable browser game Snake 2.0. Stay consistent with your design and technical approach described in the PRD. The priority is a fully functional version that runs in a web browser without external dependencies. Focus on making the game fun, responsive and visually clear, following your own creative direction and implementation plan. We'll hit enter on both prompts so each model can now start building the game. Quick update, we can see on the left that Composer 1 has already completed 10 of 12 to-dos. It's still working on creating the main game logic file now. On the right hand side, Codex has identified three main tasks it needs to complete. It has now started the implementation phase. So it's taking a bit longer to get started. Whereas on the other hand, Composer's already gone ahead and as you can see up the top, it's written 2,100 lines of code already. We can now see on the right hand side, Codex is also starting to write code. It hasn't written as much yet as Composer, but it's starting to build out the game. Composer's still continuing to build all of the features. Okay, so both models have finished the task. The big difference here was the time it took each model to complete the task. On the left hand side, we have Composer 1, which completed the task in 1 minute and 45 seconds. On the right hand side, we have Codex, which completed the task in 15 minutes and 33 seconds. So that's a huge difference in the time taken to complete the task. It's going to be very interesting to see how the games perform live when we test them shortly, because that's a huge difference in regards to how long each model has taken to complete the task. If we have a look on the left hand side, we can see Composer 1 has created 11 files in total. Index.html is the main file that will run the game. That is 96 lines of code. We can see at the top, it has written a total of 2,187 lines of code. On the right hand side, we have Codex. It has created 17 files in total and a total of 2,327 lines of code. So pretty similar in terms of the total lines of code written by each model. Index.html on the codex side is 95 lines of code, very similar to Composer 1. And that will be the main file that runs the game as well on the codex side. We'll now jump into the directory and just have a closer look at this code before we test the games. So we can see both directories now are open, so we can have a look at how they've structured the project and how they've written the index.html file. On the left hand side, Composer has a CSS folder with style.css. It has then created a JS folder for all the JavaScript files, so audio, food, game, inputs, obstacles, power-ups, renderer, snake, and storage. And then obviously we've got our index.html file, which we can see on screen here. On the right hand side, Codex has 
index.html file is pretty similarly structured to composers. There's obviously some differences in the actual code itself, but the actual layout is pretty similar. As for the project directory, Codex has broken it down into more subfolders. So we have an audio folder which has controller.js, a core folder which has constants, game, loop, random, and state machine, a data folder which has arenas, an entities folder which has arena, food, powerups, and snake, and then systems which has input.js, a UI folder which has hud.js, overlays, and then we've got main and obviously index.html. The real test is going to be the functionality of the game, so we'll now open each game up and test it out. Okay, so here is the composer version of Snake 2.0. We can see we've got a heading, high score, start game, and toggle theme, and then controls at the bottom. Let's click toggle theme. We can see it flicks to light mode, back to dark mode. So we can play in either dark mode or light mode using this button. We'll click start and we'll see how the game works. We've got our grid here. The snake isn't moving at the moment. I can't seem to get the snake to move. I can see the red dot here, which is obviously the food. You can pause the game so we can resume or quit. I'm just going to quit and start again. So obviously there's an issue here that the game isn't working. So I'll go back to Composer and ask it to fix the issue. I'll explain what's wrong and see if it can fix it. Okay, so I prompted Composer a few times to work on the issue. There's still a bit of an issue when I start the game. Sometimes it starts, the snake starts moving, sometimes it doesn't, and then I've just got to quit and try and test it again or prompt Composer to try and fix it again. This time I've got it working, so we can see here it is a functioning snake game now. There's some audio as well every time I get a piece of food. We can see level and combo up the top. There's meant to be some power-ups as per the code. This might be one here because we can see the foods change colour. We can see there's now two. I'm not sure what that did. That looks like it slowed me down. So that must... And now it says level complete. So we can see level one bonus. Now we're onto a new level. And now it looks like it's not starting again. So again, the issue here we're having is a bit of inconsistency with the snake actually moving and starting. So we're onto level two, but the snake won't move, so there's a slight issue. So we might leave it there for the review of the composer version. Given that it took 1 minute 45 seconds to complete the task, it's still not a bad effort given that it's a functioning game. Obviously it's not ideal and there's, there's obviously issues with the code because there are things that are not working. We can see the snake has just started moving again randomly now. And we see we hit the wall, it says game over. So that will sum up the composer review. So we'll note that there was a few issues with the Composer build and we'll now jump over to Codex and we'll see if it's done any better. Okay, so here is the Codex version of Snake 2.0. We can see the interface here. We've got score, best score, streak and level up the top. In the middle we've got Snake 2.0. We've got a play button and a daily challenge button. We've also got assist mode which is currently set to off. At the bottom we can see a boost, magnet and time warp setting as well which might be a feature within the game. Firstly, we'll just hit play and test the game. So we can see it has started up. I can't see a snake at the moment though. I can hear music, so there's background music on the game. We can see boost, magnet and time warp at the bottom, but there's no snake. So I'll go back to Codex and explain the issue and see if it can fix it. So I prompted Codex a few times to fix the issue with the snake not appearing. And it has fixed that issue now, so we can test the game. So I'll hit play. We can see the snake is now on screen, so we can move it around and collect the food and see if there are any power-ups or features that appear. We can see boost, magnet and time warp down the bottom seem to be changing as we progress. We've moved on to level 2, but unlike the composer version, it didn't stop the game to start a new level. We've just moved on to level 2, as you can see in the top right, and it seems to be functioning pretty well. We haven't seen any power-ups yet. We're just still collecting food. The boost and magnet have filled up at the top, but I'm not sure what they actually do. There's no real instructions or guide on what will happen when they fill up. 
we can see now we've moved on to level 4 and it's put an obstacle on the screen. We can also see an orange dot up the top, so I might grab that and see what that does. That might be a power up. Oh no, it's ended my game. So there you go. So the Codex version after a few back and forth prompts with that initial issue has fixed that and it's a working game. It's obviously hard to get an in-depth idea of the capabilities of each model in a test like this, but this was just an interesting use case to see how both went with a task like writing a PRD and building a game. So I hope you enjoyed that look at both models. Composer obviously had the advantage of completing the task a lot quicker. There was an issue with the build and a bit of back and forth. We weren't able to solve that issue, but if I went back and prompted Composer more and spent some more time in a chat session with Composer, I could probably get to a point where that game was functioning better. The Codex version, on the other hand, took a lot longer to complete the task, over 15 minutes. It also created more files and broke down the structure of files into subfolders, but overall used about the same amount of code as Composer. It also had an issue when we started the game, but we were able to fix that issue and get the game functioning with just a couple of prompts, so that was the result. If you want to see me test these models with any other specific tasks or workflows, let me know in the comments below. If you also want to see any other models tested against either of these two models, let me know. I'm working on a lot of model comparison videos where I give models tasks and see who performs best. So let me know in the comments and I can work on those videos as well. If you'd like to see those videos and more, make sure you subscribe and thanks for watching.